Robert Underwood Johnson is a little nervous. His friend, Nikola Tesla, has accepted his request to contribute an educational piece on wireless communication to The Century, a magazine he co-edits. He and Tesla have collaborated before, but Tesla has, shall we say, an eccentric streak. So much so that Underwood writes to him about the piece on March 6, 1900. Dear Tesla, I just can't see you misfire this time. Trust me in my knowledge of what the public is eager to have from you. Keep your philosophy for a philosophical treatise and give us something about the experiments themselves. Soon, a letter arrives in the mail. Tesla has sent back a 12,000-word discourse, a draft of his piece titled The Problem of Increasing Human Energy with Special Reference to the Harnessing of the Sun's Energy. Underwood opens the package and reads, From an incandescent mass we have originated, and into a frozen mass we shall turn. Uh Uh-oh. This does not sound like a piece on wireless communication. Underwood continues, Merciless is the law of nature, and rapidly and irresistibly we are drawn to our doom. Oh no, this is exactly the type of work Underwood had hoped to avoid. But he can't just throw it away. Tesla is, for all his eccentricity, undeniably a genius, so Underwood doesn't dare cross out sections he does not understand. There is, after all, profound originality and brilliance to this writing. Despite Tesla's dramatic, worrying prose, what he outlines is a significant portion of his worldview, covering a mind-boggling number of metaphysical topics, many of which sounded like science fiction in 1900, many of which still sound like science fiction today. To mention just a few topics of this essay, Tesla speaks of evolution, artificial intelligence, the possibility of survival without food, hydrolysis, solar energy, the plurality of worlds, and finally, as requested, wireless communication. Underwood decides the best approach is to clarify Tesla's dizzying genius through organization. He includes subheadings, attaches descriptive photos, and asks Tesla for clarification. Then he goes ahead with publication. But what does Tesla think about all of this? It's safe to say Tesla was fairly unconcerned with public skepticism. This was a man who ends this essay, insisting that a scientist does not aim at an immediate result. He does not expect that his advanced ideas will be readily taken up. His work is like that of the planter for the future. His duty is to lay the foundation for those who are to come and point the way. Besides, on this very same day, Underwood advises Tesla to write an educational piece. Tesla sends another letter. My dear Robert, I heard you are not feeling well, and I hope that is not my article that makes you sick. Yours sincerely, N. Tesla. One might imagine Tesla writing this letter, smiling to himself while sitting in his lab, a lab sparkling and crackling with his latest electrical experiments, not at all worried, like Underwood is, over how the public will view his article. Underwood, after all, is trying to sell magazines. But Tesla, a genius writing for the future, has the luxury not to worry if he is misunderstood in his own time. 